Amen. Let's bow our head. Lord, we are just grateful. You are the great I am, and you're the great shepherd. You take very good care of us, Lord. Thank you for this day, and thank you for the blessings of the day. We pray that something about this word will bless somebody. We thank you for our church, for those the church members and the families. We ask, Lord, that you would just speak, speak a word. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way in every heart. Thank you for remembering us, Lord, and not leaving us alone. We honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I know we say this at the end of the service, but I want you to look at somebody and tell them God loves you. And so do I. God loves you. So, amen. Let's give God praise before we take our seats. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you about the extension of uh, Psalm 23 that we just were singing. The extension is found in John chapter 10. John chapter 10, Jesus is speaking, and he's speaking to uh, not only his disciples, but to a group of men and women. Mm -hmm. and we'll start at the uh, first verse, and where we'll park for a few minutes is at the 10th verse. I want to say I certainly enjoyed the scripture reading and the prayer this morning, as well as the worship. In this 10th chapter of John, it says, verse number one, it says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a what? Thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. Uh -huh. Then the sixth verse says, Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. So he's picking up Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and all these other verse, verses, and he's using this illustration of sheep, sheepfold and shepherd but the bible says they didn't understanding understand what he spoke may the lord give us an understanding so now in the seventh verse just a few more verses he begins to be more clear and direct then jesus said to them again most assuredly i say to you i am the door of the sheep uh-huh He's making it a little bit more personal. He says, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Mm -hmm. They tricked the sheep. Then he says again, the second time, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief, here's our principal verse, the thief comes or does not come except to what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come, Jesus says, that ye might have life, that they may, might have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. You're supposed, you and I are supposed to have not only life, but life more abundantly. I want to use for a, a theme in uh, the next 20 minutes that we have a good shepherd. We need to remember Jesus didn't just come and die on a cross that you might be saved, but he is our shepherd. 
That means he's looking after us. He's attending to us. You are not on your own. You are not without somebody to guide you into greener pastures. I know, I know, I know. We put our resumes together. I understand that. I know that we get our uh, thoughts together before the interview. But who led you to go that way? Who's helping you when you don't feel as good about yourself as you should be feeling about yourself? Who is the one that took you through that dark place, that hard time? It was the shepherd of your soul. And I come to remind you that we have a good, you ain't going into the hospital alone. Even during COVID time, Jesus was not restricted from the hospital. You can't restrict him. Uh-uh, he's not passport sensitive. Jesus goes into all nations. Hallelujah. Do you know animals, unless you encage them, they're not passport sensitive either. Birds still migrate from one continent to the other. And if you allow your spirit to go up to the throne of grace, you won't be bound by your circumstance. So here it is. He says in that first verse, uh, that he is, uh, most assuredly I say unto you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, the same is a thief and a robber. What is the sheepfold? I better keep my glasses on today. Somebody say praise the Lord. What is the sheepfold? And he uses these terms metaphorically. Uh -huh. The sheepfold uh, is the place of pasture, but it's spiritual. The sheepfold is the place that your heart can go, but your head cannot. When Jesus says in Revelations 3 and 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock, he's not physically knocking somewhere, but he's knocking spiritually on the doors of your heart. Mm -hmm. And in Romans 10 and 10, it says this, or Romans 10 and 8, says, but what does it say? The word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. So when Jesus talks about these things and the, the sheepfold and the door, he's talking about your inner person, mm -hmm. the person within you. And then he reminds us that the devil comes and tries to deceive our mind, but he cannot speak to our heart. Anytime the enemy tries to come in, he comes to your, this is where all the, the um, physical things reside. Uh huh. That's why you ought to feel something when you want to relate to somebody close. You need to have a feeling in your heart along with in your head. Somebody say praise the Lord. The Lord speaks to our heart. Our heart. So anyone who speaks to your head and your emotion and not your heart is a thief and a robber. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to touch my heart, not just my head. You can't fool me just by saying, oh, uh, oh I like the way you put on that uh, necklace. I no, no, no. What, what do you see in me? The heart will always know the voice of truth. Mm -hmm. The voice of a stranger will always have a debate in it. So when someone speaks to you and you're wondering, ah, that sounds good, but is it good? It sounds okay, but my mind and my spirit are debating. Then you have to, you, you, you have to check it. But when the Lord speaks to you, and some, some of you all have had an experience, really all of us have had an experience with the Lord where you don't have to question. You know it was the Lord that spoke to you. You know it was God that, that, that gave you that answer that you were looking for. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is saying, a stranger you will not follow. Then in verse 3, it says uh, something related to the doorkeeper. We're getting to verse 10. It says here, to him the doorkeeper opens. Look at verse 2 first. But he who enters the uh, uh, by the door is the shepherd. Uh-huh. And it says to him, the doorkeeper opens. This doorkeeper is you. You're the doorkeeper of your heart. 
Uh huh. That's why you get angry when somebody deceives you. You control whether you open or whether you stay closed. So he's using these metaphors and this sheepfold and shepherd, but he's really talking about the door of your heart. Mm -hmm. And you are the doorkeeper of that. The Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 23, keep your heart with all diligence. Mm -hmm. It says, for out of it springs the issues of life. If you want to really know somebody, you, uh, you, you have to look at them closely. That's why shady guys wear shades. Cause you, cause, no, no, I'm serious. Yeah, I know it's uh, kind of funny for me to say it that way. But if you look in somebody's eyes, you can see whether they lying. Or, come on, talk to me. When you're, when you're babies and you're trying to discipline them, what does mama say? Look at me. Because like, you can tell if they went into the cookie jar or they didn't. By the way, I don't know what it is about the eyes, but the old folks used to say the eyes is the door of the soul. That you can see into a person. And, and if somebody, if you're talking to somebody and they keep looking away, you know they're lying. So here, it, it, the, 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 the keeper of the, the, the place of your heart is you. Uh-huh. Proverbs 4 and 23. Uh, keep your heart with all diligence. Mm-hmm. For out of it springs the issues of life. Your heart don't lie. Your mouth do and your head do. But your heart does not. If anybody ever asks you, well, tell me how your heart feels. It don't, it don't, it's not in between. It's not all over the place. Your heart speaks the truth. And this is where God resides. When you're talking about where does the Holy Spirit live? Well, the, uh, you just sang that. The Spirit lives within me. My, my victory. My, your victory is inside. Because you can have all the money in the world and not be happy. I know some people like that. Got plenty of money, which we pray for and we hunger. Or oh, if I just had a little bit more. Mm. I've learned that God blesses in the little bit. If you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, the smallest seed in the seed family, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it will happen for you. I, it took me a long time to understand why God refused some of my requests. Because it's not good for you to have too much. You lose your faith. Look at some folks when they get, they get up in their thing and everything and everything's going on. They don't need nobody now because I, I done got my Rolls Royce or whatever it is that you feel is big. Then when you come to their house, uh, they got the nice carpet and you used to come in with your shoes on. Uh-uh. I'm not talking about for cleanliness purposes. I'm talking about, I'm talking about bougie now. Have changed on you. Mm -hmm. I, I've had friends drop me. Yes, I have, because I didn't, I didn't flow with the bougie. Then I've had some pick me up because I'm real. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. The doorkeeper of your heart is you. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about he goes in and out and finds pasture. That's in verse uh, 9. He's really talking about spiritual things now. Let's read verse 9. I'm getting to verse 10. In verse 9, it says, I am the door. In other words, uh, if you want to know real things and the truth about things, Jesus is the one for that. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pastures. He's talking about spiritual things, saints. Really, he's talking about spiritual things from the beginning. Now, let's get to our principal verse, which is verse number 10. And this is where I wanted to uh, hone in and dive a little deeper. It says in verse 10, mm -hmm, it says, the thief does not come. Now, he's talking about shepherds and all this other good stuff. And then he interjects this into his, his words on he's the door, he's the, uh, the green pastures and things. He says, the thief does not come but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come, say the Lord has come, 
that you might have life. Hallelujah. That there will be periodic and uh, flows of abundance. It doesn't say periodic. If you, when you get into his rest, every day is a blessing. Every day is abundant. Every day you got something to rejoice about. Now I want to say in verse 10, the first thing that I looked at is that both are coming. Both are going to come and check on your heart to see if you are right. I remember a scripture um, where Jesus says, the enemy is coming or the devil is coming. I think it's John 14 uh, and 30. I will not no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. The devil's going to visit your quiver. Whether you save, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized or not, he's going to visit your quiver. The question is, does he find anything in you? Mm -hmm. Does he find an entrance place into your heart? One of the things that we don't like that's in some people's heart is jealousy. Oh, it's hard to be around a jealous person. You can't have half of nothing because they're always looking, not looking to compliment you on your achievements, not looking to say, well done, my sister. You really got it going on? No, 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 no. You feel the wrong spirit coming out of them because they allowed the enemy came because both Jesus and the enemy, not that they're equal, but they both come. Jealous folks have a crack in their armor. They have a little bit of opening for the wrong spirit. Jealousy leads to envy. Oh, and that's a cruel one. If somebody's envious of you, they have you on their mind. Run from envious folks until your spirit is strong enough to be around them. Because they'll make you say something that you shouldn't say. They'll make you call them out of their name. And say, hey, this, this one here, <laughs> you start doing your lips, the wrong, mm, this one here, and this, 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 uh, mm, I can't say it on the mic because I'm supposed to be preaching, but you know it comes to our head. Jealousy is what the enemy brings because jealousy produces nothing but death and destruction and foolishness. Hallelujah. Mm. Says the enemy has come both thief and the shepherd come to you. The, key, the thief comes to steal what you have. And he don't have to take your car, your apartment, or your house. He can just take your peace. You're always concerned about this or that. You never are settled. Hallelujah. You never are, are, are able to lift your hands in the worship experience and really feel God because God and frustration don't flow together. God and worry don't flow together. God and strife, they ain't in the same uh, uh, venue. Hallelujah. Where God is, there is perfect peace. You want to experience God. You, when you step into his room, you start experiencing peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. The world can't take it away. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me and he cannot take it away. I strive for peace. You know, as we get older, we wake up in the middle of the night for one reason or another. And all this stuff try to come to your mind. I just say peace. Lord, I lay it at your feet. Jesus went out on the boat with the disciples and he, he had so much plea, peace that he could sleep in the middle of a storm. Even when your body is racking with pain and you got concerns about this and concerns about that, ask God, give me peace in the middle of my storm. You don't have to take my storm away, but give me your peace. All of us go through storms, storms of loneliness, storms of discomfort, storms about our finance, storms because we live with the devil. 
Yes, I said it. Sometimes in your life, you're with the wrong one and you're living with the devil. All of us have had it. Whether in our youth or our adulthood, we've lived with what, in places we didn't want to be there. We didn't want to lie down where we were lying down. But God, hallelujah, somebody say God. But God can give you peace in your storm. That's the kind of shepherd he is. And he can give you peace in your mistakes. That's why most prayers, we should ask God for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. I, 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 I ain't made it yet, saints. And even though I'm living a safe life, I still say, Lord, forgive me, because you may have accidentally said something that hurt somebody's feelings. You walking by, by and saying, uh, oh, you are, praise the Lord, good to see you today. And um, you say, oh, those shoes are different. That person may hear that for the rest of the day because it's a tool for the enemy to mess up y'all's relationship. You didn't mean anything by it. You may have, may have forgotten it long time ago and never thought about it, but the person you said it to, you offended them. When I didn't have very much money at all, I had to buy suits that weren't right. Somebody say praise the Lord. <laughs> suits that was a little not, and I had one that was real shiny. <laughs> it was black. It was, the appro it was appropriate for certain services because you had to wear black at certain things. You know, some denominational churches, you have, you have to be in order. <laughs> You got to wear, like this afternoon, I got to dress differently. I got, because I'm going to another, this is my last one, y'all. That, that, that's number seven. Praise God. I've been sure, but I didn't have the money, Sister Shanita, to get the right suit. And this brother who came next to me said, oh, uh, Elder William, that's, that's uh, shiny. And that thing stuck in my head. Now, he didn't mean nothing by that. It was a shiny suit. It shined just like shoes, like you had buffed it. It wasn't right, y'all. It wasn't right at all. I looked so throwed and uncoordinated and un didn't have no, uh, uh, what does you call it? When fashion, Melissa, I needed your help. I tell you what, that thing was shiny. And the brother said, Ella William, that's shiny. Woo! And that thing stuck in my head. He offended me. He don't know my financial say I didn't have enough money to get the non-shiny suit. I got a pretty nice one now. I can pay three, four hundred, five hundred dollars for a suit. But back then, you know, we had a store in South Bend, Indiana called Kresky's. While everybody else was wearing All Stars, I was wearing Kresky Specials, two for five dollars. And you know, them things were hard enough to kick a kickball all the way over to the next neighborhood. I mean, they were hard plastic and they hurt your feet real bad, but now I don't have to do that. Hey, I, I have some nice shoes now, but you, back in the day, so we have to ask repentance because of, we don't know. Hmm, Eve had both God and the enemy come to her. And the way that the enemy comes to you is to speak a partial truth. He, don't just, he didn't come to Eve with a lie. He says, uh, you, you will be like God. You'll be able to speak things, and they manifest. Uh-huh. You'll be able to name something, and that's the name of it. And, and other thing, but it was a lie that, she would, that God didn't tell her not to eat that thing. God gave the, the instruction that he gave the husband, he gave it to Eve. So she had to deal with that. A, a Judas, uh, he was there eating. Enjoying the blessings of being around Jesus in the final supper. Jesus says, the person that I dip my bread in and give it to him, that's the one that's going to betray me. The devil entered his what? The Bible is very clear. The devil entered his heart, not his head. Judas always had problems with the finance. When the alabaster box lady came, she had saved her money. She came and she put it poured the alabaster box over Jesus, it was Judas who said, oh, we could have given that money to the poor. Why are you wasting money? He always had it in his head, but when he betrayed Jesus, the devil entered his heart. Ah, uh, yeah. 
And so uh, these things happen. Uh, with us, there's three primary tactics of the devil. The Bible says in 1 John 2 and 16, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. You don't have to uh, uh, wonder how the enemy is going to come to you. Most men have to guard their flesh. Men are wired much different than women. We even we could have a safe, sanctified wife. She's doing everything for us, but we still have to to catch our thoughts, to catch our ways, and say, "Lord, sanctify me over." It. And it goes with you all the way to the grave. The lust of the flesh, and then these eyes. Uh huh. These eyes. Some people can't stop spending money. Come on, uh, ladies. Y'all not so into men. I know you need one just to kind of take out the garbage or something, but you ain't really into us like we are into you, uh, if I might say that. <laughs> hey, some can just be, do without for a while, but them clothes, them weaves, them shoes, them, them certain size of this and that, you're very into that, very much so. The first real gift, I'm, I'm talking too much now, I'm, going, I'm meddling, so to speak now. The first real gift that I saw my wife just light up, I mean, she got that big old South African smile, was a makeup kit. Uh huh. It, my daughter, my oldest daughter, recommend, I said, well, what should I get her? I don't know what exactly she really likes. I know she liked that. When I brought that 15 or 30 different uh, things that you put over here and you swoop it over here and my baby girl there turned 16 today, you swoop it over here and then you put this uh, and then you, oh, she lit up. I, that I, that, uh, y'all got to deal with that now. Thank God we got disciplined folk here that don't spend all their money on some foolishness and get into credit card debt. But that I, when he says the lust of the I, he would say, might as well say the lust of women. That I, that I will get you into trouble. The flesh, that's a dude every day. He can't hardly, when, when you, and then when you're in your 20s and you're a dude, you can't hardly walk down the street. Everything you see, you're looking at. Then we get older and we understand, oh, no, no, that's not the right way, man. Just look and, and, and keep on moving, especially if you're with somebody. So am I the only foolish one? You walking through the mall with your girlfriend and, 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 and you doing this, and she had to pop you upside the head to get, what's wrong? And then everything you saw when you was young, I like that. I got to get the latest shoes. I got to get the latest this. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And then that final one, Pride. Pride is a killer. And that's both. That's both. You can be sitting up in the house having a good time. The devil creep in and the person say something. Like, uh, or don't say something. <laughs> don't respond right. Who is he not to speak back to me? The devil is a lie. I'm going to get him. Then you, the, the man come home and his ego is up here because everybody at the job been saying, oh, you look nice, you're doing well. The wife don't say nothing, half kiss him when he come through the door. And he get proud. Instead of checking to see how her day was, he's pr the pride. Who does she think? I could get any woman. The devil is a lie. See how he creeps in? He's deceitful. He's sneaky, and he, and he comes in like that. Oh, how do we defeat the enemy's tactics? I'm, I'm bringing it in now. Number one weapon, and David knew this very well. Number one weapon to keep your home happy, you praise the Lord. Number one weapon against God, and I, I was in a service at Cathedral of Faith a uh, long time ago, and Bobby Henderson, evangelist Bobby Henderson, Cathedral of Faith, Church of God in Christ on Avon Avenue. Bobby Henderson came in there, and I can remember the setting, but I can't remember the exact things, but his message was, my praise is my weapon of warfare. If you want the shepherd to always have access and to defeat the enemy's tactics, Praise the Lord from the earth. 
Praise the Lord, all ye sea monsters and deeps, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds, fully uh, uh, fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and cedar trees, uh, uh, beast and cattle, creeping things, winged fowls, kings of the earth, all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and virgins, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and the heavens. We must praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back. I give him glory and thanks for my life, my health, and my strength. Hallelujah. We must pray. Psalm 150 talks about praising the Lord. This psalm that I was just reading is Psalm 148, 7 through 30, 13. We must have something in us, deep down inside, that keeps a thank you on the line. Hallelujah. There was two men who brought back a good report when the children of Israel went out to spy the land. Two. One's name was Joseph, and one, the other name was uh, uh, Joshua, and the other one's name was Caleb. God didn't take them out of the wilderness experience. And let them just sit on the sideline while all the other people were dying. God didn't uh, 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 restrict them from eating the manna that came from heaven. Mm -mm. He didn't take them out and just let them hang out when they had to go and conquer the land in Joshua 1 and, and on throughout Joshua. But he sustained them in the process. God does not have to take you out of your situation and make you some superhuman that don't experience things, but he sustains us within it. And one of our sustaining things is our praise. The reason that every Sunday the praise singers and the musicians come because there's something spiritual about worshiping and thanking God. It changes how we feel and how we think. It changes how we experience life. It changes how we go about our day. Anybody, that's why the devil wants to shut down your praise. He, he wants to isolate. When you isolate, that's what COVID was all about, is to isolate and make you go down somewhere and, and be in a place that can't lift up and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, you are the, I, I'm the apple of your eye. We have to keep a praise in our spirit. We have to all be like Pastor Matt, who has a musical experience with God. That's why David was so powerful. David's anointing got to the place that it could cast out demons. You want your house to be well and whole and loving? Praise the Lord in the house. Praise him in the bedroom. Praise him in the kitchen. Praise him when you're cleaning out the garage. Praise the Lord in your house. And the devil will have a resistance from coming in. Hallelujah. I know when the devil comes in my house. Sometimes people come over. I can feel it because my praise gets tilted. My worship is, is kind of, hey, oh, Jesus. Mm. That's number one. You can feel it, saints of God. It's not just that the person has a bad attitude. It's the fragrance of their spirit. It's the, it's the buoyancy of their worship. And don't let no child turn your praise. If a child, hey, this old school, and you may not be able to handle it. If a, if, a, if a child comes into your house, they're coming into your rules. Stop being a punk and letting children tell you what to do. It's your house. You pay the bill. And they got to follow or get out. I know we love them. 
That don't mean you don't help them once they turn around. But when will they learn that this world is cruel? You don't pay your bill, they coming to get that car. And no, my mama always let me get away with all kinds. Negro, please, hear me. You do your child a disservice if you don't let them know what the real world is like. Let me stop paying for that car out there. And watch what happened. They ain't going to say, oh, you, you was just heady. <laughs> no, give us that car back. Hello, y'all, that, that touched your nerves. Sorry about all that. Praise the name of Jesus. See, you got to praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. All my children. Oh, my God. I, they're all welcome to come home. Morris, every one of my children are welcome to stay right with me for the rest of my life. I don't care if they're 50, if they get hard, hard up. They need some place to stay. You don't want them sleeping on the street or under a bridge. They're welcome, but they got to follow this woman's rules. It's simple as that. It ain't, it ain't, and you can smoke your reefer and drink your beers and drink all kinds. Just don't do it in my house. But when you get tired and you need some place to sleep or something to eat, come on. Come on. I'm, I'm here, but I'm not going to take down. Never. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I know y'all scared. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you on Zoom, you scared. <laughs> not me. Uh-uh. Sonia said something that's going to stay with me for the rest of my life. She was up preaching, and she says, don't, and I, I'm paraphrasing. She says, don't let truth move, because when somebody comes back to look for it, truth or righteousness or holiness, when they come back to look for it, they need to find it where they first saw it. I thought that came straight from heaven, and I used that. Don't, don't, you don't be cruel, but don't move. Wanda, don't move. <laughs> See, my fist is balled up. Let's move on. Let's go. Got to close. The second one is a partnership with saints. I got people that can pray for me mm, all over the world, and I got a church that can pray for me. Do you need partnerships? The devil, the reason Jesus sent them out two by two, why? One can watch the other one's back. You got to have close friends that can pray. Thank you, Jesus. I know you want to do your own thing. Go ahead, do it. But you got to have somebody that can pray for you. Hallelujah. The third one is uh, 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 passion for obedience. You just need to be passionate, passionate. If you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. Amen. These are weapons on how to defeat the enemy's tactics. You can't go along with God. I mean, go along with the devil and be praising God at the same time. You can't be fussing. And telling somebody a piece of your mind and worshiping that it's not you ain't that good. You can't think I can't think that fast. <laughs> oh, praise the name of oh, you make me praise the name of Jesus. You make me it don't, it don't work like that. Uh-uh. When you worship, it's a it's an experience. If if you just call Jesus too many times, you go start going into worship. You start going, Jesus, Adonai, uh, Elohim, Jesus, Jesus. You, you, your mind shifts. It's something about that name. If you confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart, you're saved. And it's something that ignites. He is my good shepherd. Mm, how do I align myself with the Lord? Because two came. The enemy comes to take from me, steal, kill, and destroy my life. But then I come, saith the Lord, that you might have life. How do I align Hmm. Praise is my weapon of defense, but my alignment comes in my morning prayers. I know I've said it many times, but early in the morning and at the bottom of the day, my prayer is, Lord, I'm, I'm with you. Whatever you want to do, do it through me. Hallelujah. So your morning prayers, you have to be consistent in it. This is how you get into abundance. <clears throat> And then uh, consistency in the morning prayers. I'm emphasizing morning. And then uh, confidence in our understanding that God has the final say. This, this scripture kind of shocked me. Because later on, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice and they're mine. He uses the word own, O-W-N. He owns me. I'm, I am his responsibility. 
I just found peace in that, saints. So consistency in your morning prayers, confidence in, I know we sing it, but God has the final say. A lot of intimidation is going on right now. You know we're eating uh, genetically modified foods. That intimidates you to think, oh, man, what did I just eat? A chicken, the chicken tastes okay, but it's too big. The portion, the wing, the, the drum leg, it looked funny. It's too, we didn't eat those when we was coming up. They were smart. So you, the, you get intimidated. I, I am intimidated that what I'm eating is not right. That somebody's put a cold or something, the conspiracy theory, somebody's put a cold or something in the food, and then they have identifiers on the fruit. Fruit used to be fruit. But if you're eating a, a fruit that starts with the number nine, I think that's a, or a four or a two or three, all those are different. And if you look on the label on your fruit, they don't have the whole nutritional thing, but they do have numbers. Thank God for the FDA or whoever made them do this. On the fruit, you, there's, there's uh, numbers. There's four numbers, in it, but the way they start is the identifier. If it's a, and I'm not going to say this right, but one number means that it's right, that they did the, uh, what do you call it? Organic. Another number means that they sprayed chemicals on it. A third number means that it's been modified genetically. Somebody has interject. You ever taste a peach that's too sweet? We're in the peach state. Peaches are supposed to be sweet, but and not mealy, but not too. Now they put things in there. So I'm intimidated. Am I okay, Lord? Is the, if, if, if I feel bad, I'm wondering, what did I eat? I got to trace it. And so there's, and then there's intimidation on the job. Oh, new systems for no reason. You learn one, and then, it, come on now. Come on, say, what is all, and, it, and it add for you, when you get a little older, it added stress, because I got this one. I can do my job. I know how to communicate. I got every report right on target. And now you're putting something on me because somebody somewhere is bored, and they want a new system. And you're saying, what it put that, that thing, you have to know that God has the final say. And I'm not touching on children or anything else because all of that, the school system, our nation, the mentality of leadership now and the desire for control. And then this, this, uh, they want to mechanize truck driving. They want to be able to put something on a truck and drive it from California to New York robotically, putting somebody out of a job. And then probably eventually, uh, I'll leave that alone, but these things intimidate us and make us tense, but God has the final say. And then my final point to, for, to, to align with the abundance of God is uh, contend and defend the faith. It used to be we could just say have faith. We can't say that anymore. You got to defend your faith. You got to know that you know that you know that you've been redeemed. And uh, all these different communities that's rising up and saying that, you, oh, we, we, we don't need God. We don't need this. We don't. Yes, you do. Oh, yeah, keep on living. You're going to need him. And a lot of folks uh, find themselves needing God on their deathbed. The great Stephen Jobs died as a billionaire, died, not of old age. Something hit his body, and he died with all kinds of money in the bank. Uh, you can have all those things, but you're going to need God for some reason, one reason or the other. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we praise you today. You are our good shepherd. Mm, you're the shepherd of our soul. You're the shepherd that looks uh, 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 after his sheep. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name that you're a good shepherd. Mm. Lord, there may be a need in this house. There may be someone that wants to re, re, uh, renew their commitment to you, Lord God. There may be one connected by Zoom that's saying, Lord, I need you to shepherd my life. Right now is that time to, say, to open your heart and say, Lord, it's me. Oh, Jesus, I need you to come in the more, Lord. Shepherd my heart. Shepherd my movements. Shepherd my life. 
So, Father, we lift up these, your people. We pray, Lord, that you would touch, that you remind us that we have a great shepherd, that you're the great I am in our life. You have the final say. You have the final say, Lord. Yes, Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, O oh God. But your word and your will delivers us from all of our affliction. We undergird and we pray for everyone in this place and everyone connected to us. We pray for our sons and our daughters. That Lord, you have mercy. Somebody say, have mercy, God. Oh, Father, we need you, Lord. In the morning time, in the middle of the day, late at night, oh God, we need your hand of mercy. So we bow down, Lord. We ask, shepherd my life the more. Shepherd my life the more, oh God. Move in the morning time, God. Move at your will, oh God. Move me into the realms of the spirit. Help me to know, God, your word and your will for my life. We thank you right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, fill us up again. Fill us with your Holy Spirit again. Fill us with the words of truth mm, that we might have a praise to defend against the enemy. That he will find nothing in us. God, we repent of our wayward ways. We repent of all our sin. We come into agreement with you. We say, have thine own way. Let miracles, signs, and wonders follow us. Oh, give me this mountain, Lord. Give me my miracle. Give me the things that you have in store for me. Let today be a special day. Hallelujah. So now, God, we, say, we rebuke the devil. Hmm. He didn't come but to steal and to kill and to destroy. We rebuke the Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We rebuke you out of our mind. We rebuke you out of our affairs. We rebuke you out of our homes. We rebuke you out of our body. Sickness, you got to go. In the name of, we rebuke you out of our churches. We rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Somebody say, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, oh God. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we praise you. Oh God, we glorify your name. And it's in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. Clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, everybody. Mm.